Module 1, Lesson 3, Equivalent Ratios. All right, learning targets. Uh, we're still going to be doing some of this first learning target with making comparisons within wholes and parts, but we are now going to be looking a little bit more at this third one. Um, we're going to make some comparisons, and we're going to predict what would happen if part of the comparison changes. In other words, we're going to write a ratio, and we're going to say, so what if the first number in the ratio changes what happens to the second number. I can statements. I can use tape diagrams to represent ratios. So we're going to work with a, at least in the video, it's going to be a representational model. Um, if you have some linking cubes, you might be able to do some concrete representations. Uh, we're going to use tape diagrams to find and explain equivalent ratios. So tape diagrams are going to be really, really important for seeing and understanding this. And I can use tape diagrams to solve problems with ratios. So we're going to use the tape diagrams to do some equivalent ratio work and answer some questions. All right, so quick warm up. Write a one sentence story problem about a ratio. Uh, this would be a review from lesson one and two. Um, the number of students in our class compared to the number of teachers is 30 to 1. So we could write 30 to 1 or 30 to 1 uh, for every 30 students. There is one teacher. And it is important to actually be able to write this out in a sentence form. So please, please, please don't skip items like this. All right, exercise two. Uh, so in this lesson, we're going to kind of be guided through some different exercises. So Shani and Mel are using ribbon to decorate a project in their art class. The ratio of the length of Shani's ribbon to the length of Mel's ribbon is seven to three. And our goal here is that we will be able to draw a tape diagram to represent this ratio. And once we have drawn that tape diagram, we are going to use that to find some equivalent ratios. And this is a strategy that we will come back to over and over again. So make sure you're really comfortable with this. All right, so we've got a blank table here, kind of organize our information, connecting back to lessons one and two. So we're going to put in here that we've got Shawnee and we've got Mel and we know the ratio is Shawnee's ribbon to the length of Mel's ribbon is 7 to 3. So go ahead and, and fill out your table. Be thinking about what this information means. And let's step forward here and go to a next step. So now we're going to draw a tape diagram for each person's portion of the ratio. And we want to break this down into parts here. We want to think our way through this problem. So the first thing we need to ask is how many units should we draw for Shawnee's portion? Units is what are we going to count by? And there are so many different ways we could do this, but let's keep it simple for today. How many units does it say Shawnee has? It says Shawnee has seven units. So we should draw seven units for Shawnee. Now for Mel, how many units are we going to draw for Mel? Well, up here in our table, Mel has three units. So take a moment and draw a tape diagram showing that Shawnee has seven units and that Mel has three units. And your tape diagram is very simple. One, two, three, four, five, six. And now that I've got seven units, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven units for Shawnee, I want three for Mel. So go ahead and draw your tape diagram. And ask yourself, what does each unit actually represent? So how much is each one of our pieces worth? What is the value of each of our pieces? And if you actually think through, we don't know. 
We don't know if it's seven inches. We don't know if it's seven feet. We don't know if this is a really big project, and maybe it's seven miles. All we know is that each of these boxes represents some kind of unit, but we don't know what unit that is. So let's do a pretend here. What if each unit was one inch? How long would each of the ribbons be? Well, let's take a quick count here. So each box is one inch, so I could say one inch, one inch, one inch, one inch, one inch, one inch, and one inch. And I would do the same for Mel, because we're counting in inches, and each box has the same value. So Shawnee would have seven inches, and Mel would have three inches. And that matches our ratio of seven to three, seven inches to three inches. And if it was inches, what would the ratio be? Well, we just said the ratio would be seven to three, and it would be measured in inches. But what if each of our units here, each of our squares, was two inches? How long would each person's ribbon be? Well, Shawnee's is going to have two inches in each one of them. I'll use a symbol for inches here. So each unit is going to be two inches. So how long are the ribbons now? Well, that would mean that Shawnee's is 14. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. And that means Mel's is 2, 4, 6. Now, listen carefully to this language here. The units are twice as big as they were before. Twice as big. That means times 2. The ribbon is now twice as long as it was before. Instead of one unit, it is two units. It is twice as long. Instead of one inch, two inch. And the ratio is now 14 to 6. And we've just proven that with a tape diagram. Here's our 14 to 6. But what if each unit represents three inches? What if each one of these boxes is three? How long would the ribbons be? Go ahead and fill out your table. Make your prediction. Think through how you would explain to someone what you had done and why. How did you get those numbers? How can you show using your tape diagram that this makes sense? Well. If each one is 3, then Shawnee's going to have 21 and Mel's going to have 9. And let me show you my thought process. Each one of these boxes is going to be 3 inches. I've got 7 boxes, or units. Each one of them is equal to 3. 7 times 3 is 21. Mel has 3 boxes, and 3 times 3 is 9. Now, right about now, my brain is starting to click and say, now, wait a minute here. On the last one, we did 7 times 2 and 3 times 2. And this time, we did 7 times 3 and 3 times 3. I'm starting to notice a pattern here. Be thinking, how are you going to explain this pattern to someone? Now, we have looked at three different examples. 7 to 3, 14 to 6, and 21 to 6. Did the units in the tape diagram ever change? Did we ever change the number of boxes that we had for Shawnee? Did we ever change the number of boxes that we had for Mel? And the answer is no. Shawnee always had three boxes. And Mel always had, sorry, Shawnee always had seven boxes. And Mel always had three. 
that never changed? No. Tape diagram did not change. What changed is the values we were putting in the tape diagram. Now, what does that tell us about these ratios? Big idea here. This tells us that these ratios are equivalent. They're talking about the same thing. Buried inside of all of these is a 7 to 3. What changed was how much we assigned each unit. In the second problem, we said each unit is going to be worth 2 instead of 1. In the third problem, we said each unit is going to be worth 3 instead of 1. It tells us that these ratios are equivalent. And, and here is kind of a, a big, long example to look at, um, kind of showing all the steps that we've gone through here. So here was our original tape diagrams, 7 and 3, 7 inches to 3 inches. And then we took that 7, and instead of putting 1 in all of the boxes, we decided to put 2 in all of the boxes. And we got 14 to 6. And in the third one, we said, hey, let's put 3 in all of the boxes, and we got 21 to 9. But notice that in every single example, we still have 7, and we still have 3. Now, something else important to pay attention to. We were always putting the same number in each one of the units. In the second example here, we were always putting 2. In the third example, we always put 3. For these tape diagrams to work, we have to know and understand that each one of the parts has the same value. Each little unit is going to have the same number in it. That is really, really, really important when we talk about tape diagrams and representing ratios. All right, let's take a look at exercise three. So now we're going to try and apply what we experimented with in the, in the second exercise. So Mason and Laney ran laps to train for the long distance running team. The ratio of the number of laps Mason ran to the number of laps Laney ran was two to three. And you'll see I've got a table set up here. So we've got Mason. And we've got Laney, and it says the ratio is 2 to 3. So if Mason ran 4 miles, how far did Laney run? And we're supposed to draw a tape diagram to show how we found the answer. Well, we've got Mason with 2 units, and we've got Laney with 3 units. Mason and Laney are ratio of 2 to 3. But it says here that Mason has run four miles. So what is each one of these units going to be worth if Mason ran four miles? There's not four parts there. There's only two parts. So the four is going to be split into two pieces. Four divided by two tells me that each square is going to be worth two. And that means that all of Laney's squares are also going to be two. Remember on the last slide, I emphasized, pointed out, drew your attention to all of the squares have the same value. So if Mason ran two miles, sorry, four miles, then Laney ran six. So let's take a look at another one. Mason and Laney ran laps to train for the long distance running team. The ratio of the number of laps Mason ran to the number of laps Laney ran was 2 to 3. If Laney ran 930 meters, so here we got Mason, here we got Laney, we've got our 2 to 3. And we are trying to figure out how far Mason ran. It says Laney ran 930. So this three sections here. These three pieces are a total of 930. You know, I'm going to draw this over to the side here so that I can indicate it just a little bit differently. There we go. 930. Now, said it once. I'm going to say it again. Each one of these has to be worth the same amount. So we're going to take this 930 and we're going to divide it by 3. So we've got 930, 
and we're going to divide by 3. And I know that 300 times 3 gives me 900. And I know that 10 times 3 gives me 30. And that's going to tell me that each of these squares is worth 310. So if Laney ran 930 meters, and each of the pieces is worth 310, then I know that Mason ran 620 meters. Once again, emphasizing the big idea here that each of these pieces has the same value. So if Laney ran 930 and the ratio is 2 to 3, we know his is in three parts. All right. So same problem. And the question is, what ratios can we say are equivalent to 2 to 3? Well, we can say, and we've used tape diagrams to illustrate it, that 4 to 6 is equal to 2 to 3, and that 930 to 620 is also equal to 2 to 3. We can say that all three of these ratios are equivalent, and we use the tape diagram to prove it. In both of our sections that we worked on, this 4 to 6 and this 620 to 930, we used the same tape diagram. All of the squares had the same value. All right, taking a look here. So exercise four, Josie took a long multiple choice end of year vocabulary test. The ratio of the number of problems Josie got incorrect to the number of problems she got correct is two to nine. So I have incorrect problems and I have correct problems and she said incorrect to correct is a ratio of two to nine. Now the question is, if Josie missed eight questions, how many did she get correct? So missed means that they are incorrect. And the question is, how many would we say she got correct? Well, let's go back and draw a tape diagram so we can see what's happening here. We have a ratio of 2 and a ratio of 9. And it says the incorrect is going to be 8. I should label these off on the side so I can remember what these tape diagrams stand for. So the incorrect is 8. Well, what does that tell us about each one of the parts in the 8? Well, 8 divided by 2, so 8 split into two groups, tells me that each box is worth 4. And if each of these boxes is worth 4, that means each of these is also worth 4. Because remember, all of our boxes have the same value, all of our units. So I've got 4 here in each of these boxes, and there are nine of them. And four times nine is 36. Now, in the back of my head, my brain's been kind of working on this, and I keep noticing that we're multiplying by the same number. Two times four gave me eight, and nine times four gave me 36. I have this idea starting to work in my head that if I multiply both parts of the ratio by the same number, I'm going to get an equivalent ratio, something that I'm going to keep thinking about and watching as I go. So if Josie missed 20 questions, how many did she get correct? And I'm supposed to draw a tape diagram, so I've got my incorrect, I've got my correct, I've got my 2, draw out my 9 here. So 20. 20 split into two parts is 10 in each one. So this was 20. And I noticed I've got 2 times 10. There's my 10 right there. So I'm going to make a prediction before I actually count this up here. I'm going to say 9 times 10, and I'm going to say 90. And then I'm going to check. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. 9 times 10. There is my 9 times 10. 
So I'm still playing with this idea in my head that, hey, if I multiply both of these numbers by the same number, I'm going to have an equivalent ratio. But I don't feel comfortable yet. But I'm starting to feel pretty confident. So taking a look here, um, what ratios can we say are equivalent? Well, we know that this 8 to 36 and this 20 to 90 are both equivalent. We drew tape diagrams, the 2 and the 9. And we just put different values in the boxes, and hey, it worked out. One time I put 4s in all of the boxes, and another time I put 10s in all of the boxes. So what's another possible number that Josie got incorrect to correct? Now go ahead and create yourself a tape diagram. If you want to experiment with that multiplication, that's fine, but make sure you back it up with the tape diagram. So what if I say she got incorrect 50? What did I multiply 2 by? Well, I did 2 times 25. And that means I've now got to do 9 times 25. Now, 10 times 25 would be 250. So if I take 25 off, then I've got 225. So let's check it with the tape diagram here. So I've got 50, and it's split into two parts, and 50 divided by 2 gives me 25 and 25. And then I've got my 9 here. And each one of these is going to have a 25 in it. And I know groups of four 25s, 1, 2, 3, 4, are equal to 100. 1, 2, 3, 4. And I find out I've got 225. Now, how did I find more numbers for this problem? Well, I experimented with this. If I multiply them both by the same number, then I will get an equivalent ratio. And then I drew a tape diagram to check it. So I multiplied both by the same number, and then I checked. So in your own words, describe how to create equivalent ratios. And we've gone through tape diagrams, and we've tried to connect into this idea here that if I multiply both numbers of the ratio by the same number, then I should have equivalent ratios. And that's the big idea that we're working on in this lesson. If I take a ratio, uh, 4, 2, 3, as long as I multiply both numbers in the ratio, for example, multiply by 5, by 5, 20 to 15, then I have two equivalent ratios. So what are equivalent ratios? Big long explanation here. So we've got two ratios. We've got a ratio of A to B, for example, 4 to 3. And we've got a ratio C to D, for example, 20 to 15. They are equivalent if there is a number other than 0, a non-zero number, and they're going to call this C, so that I can take my C and multiply A times it and B times it, and I will get two ratios that are equivalent. So in other words, I've got my 4 to 3, and I multiply both of them by 5. Now I've got an equivalent ratio. So C right here, this guy right here, this C, is equal to A multiplied by my little c there. So a, which is my 4, multiplied times 5 gave me 20. Here's my d, which is equal to 
my little c here, my 5, multiplied by 3 to get 15. So in other words, I'm taking a ratio and I multiply both of them by the same number. Now you'll also notice on one of the problems that we divided both of them by the same number. Things to play with. How do we find equivalent ratios? Okay, two parts to this. Ratios are equivalent if there is a non-zero number that can be multiplied by both quantities in one ratio to equal the corresponding quantities in the second. So I've got 4 to 3, and let's say I've got 15 to 9. Is there a number that I can multiply 4 by and 3 by to get 15 and 9? I multiply 4 and 3 by the number and get 15 and 9, and the answer is no. So these are not equivalent to each other. I would multiply 3 times 3 to get 9. But what am I going to multiply 4 by to get 15? Can I multiply it by 3? Nope. Wouldn't work. I would get 12 over here and I would get 9 here. So in more English here, find equivalent ratios. We multiply both numbers in the ratio by the same number. All right. I can statements. I can use tape diagrams to represent ratios. Hopefully you are feeling very comfortable with drawing yourself some units to represent tape diagrams. I can use tape diagrams to find and explain equivalent ratios. So you can draw a tape diagram, you can put the same number in all of the boxes and figure out the value. And then use tape diagrams to solve problems. And we did that on exercises two, three, and four. All right, learning target. Big one here was this one. I can reason about comparisons and make predictions about what would happen if part of the comparison changes. So for example, a ratio of 4 to 3, what if the 4 was 20, what would happen to the 3? Well, we know we multiplied by 5, so we'll multiply by 5 and we'll get 15. So we can make equivalent ratios. All right, that concludes Module 1, Lesson 3. Make sure you look through your problem set. If you've got questions, make sure you talk to your teacher.